Ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to it. This is John Cameron Swayze. Yesterday in his inaugural address, President Eisenhower said, Budapest is no longer merely the name of a city. Henceforth, it's a new and shining symbol of man's yearning to be free. No event in modern history has so shaken the free world as the incredible struggle of the Hungarian people for their right to live in freedom. For it was a struggle that proved that a people can never be subdued by terror, a struggle that displayed once again for all the world to see the complete brutality and the inhumanity of Soviet oppression. In a few moments, the freedom fighters of Hungary on the Armstrong Circle Theater. Armstrong Circle Theater, brought to you by the Armstrong Cork Company. Armstrong for building products. Armstrong for floors and floor coverings. Armstrong for packaging materials. And hundreds of other products that serve you by serving industry. Here's an old problem. Cold water pipes that sweat and drip, and drip and drip. And here's the answer. A brand new type of Armstrong pipe insulation called Armaflex. It's made of foamed plastic. On cold water pipes, Armaflex will stop condensation. And if you want to save fuel by cutting down on heat loss from hot water pipes, Armaflex is your answer here, too. It's simple to install. It can be slipped over the pipes or cut and wrapped around them. This modern insulation was developed for use on industrial air conditioning systems and on pipes that carry both hot and cold liquids. Here in the new office building of the Connecticut General Life Insurance Company, almost three and one-half miles of Armaflex was used. This entire job was done by Armstrong's contract service. This organization offers complete service for commercial jobs like this, from the blueprint stages to final installation. If you'd like to know more about Armaflex or need help with any kind of insulation problem, whether it's for your home or business, just write to Armstrong, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Modern insulating materials are just a few of the hundreds of products made by Armstrong to serve industry, to serve you and your home. Budapest, November 4th, 1956. A city of tension, of fear, of hope, a shattered city. For 12 days, torn to bits by the ruthless power of Soviet tanks and armor, yet held together by the determined spirit of thousands of people reaching for freedom. People reaching for freedom. Revolutionaries. What is a revolutionary? A man like Chandor Gobi, captain in the Hungarian army. A woman like Anna Paritzel, factory worker, mother, wife. A boy like Miklos Lukas, a student at Budapest University. Twelve short days ago, these three were unknown to each other. They could not have imagined themselves together in this room, waiting to defend their homeland against the most powerful armed might the world has ever known. Three people, part of a united fighting force, defending their flag. October 22nd, 1956. Area slightly smaller than the state of Ohio. Population about 10 million. Economy chiefly agricultural. Hungary, a country with a thousand year tradition of defending their homeland against foreign rule. For 12 years, a Soviet satellite ruled by a communist government selected and controlled by Moscow. 12 years of communist suppression, of fear, of hatred. It's one large city, Budapest, on the surface a quiet city, engaged in normal daily activities. But underneath an unrest, a growing discontent, fanned a new height by the recent riots in Poland. And yet, to some, this unrest did not exist. 
Only the annoyance of waiting at a cafe on Parliament Square seemed important to Hungarian Army Captain Chandor Gobi, age 32, professional soldier. Mr. Sabo. Yes, Captain. What's keeping Maria? Do you know? I've been waiting half an hour. Oh, my daughter has a keen business sense, Captain. The longer you wait, the more wine you buy. <laughs> she should be down right away. Mr. Sabo. What is it about a woman that makes her think she becomes more attractive by being late? And what's more, she never even... She never even what? She never even disappoints me. She always is more attractive. <laughs> Daddy, darling, you look charming. It's a new dress. But so expensive. You know, darling, what I would like to do? Hmm. I would like to cross the border and go to Vienna and buy all the beautiful clothes I see. Maria, please. Someone might be listening. My father is always so nervous. Lenny, darling, I have a surprise for you. Remember that Russian officer, Colonel Kalinov, from the inspector's office? Oh, the one with the eyes? He's arranged to get me two tickets to the ballet. How wonderful. Swan Lake. You know, Maria, these Russians may be barbarians, but when it comes to ballet, they're the only ones with a true feeling for movement, fire, grace. Well, when is it? Tonight? Not tomorrow. Uh, see, Tuesday. Tuesday, October 23rd. Two tickets to the ballet. For Captain Gobi, an important achievement. For others, for workers at a Budapest textile factory, there were different concerns. For Anna Peretzel, machine operator, there was only eating and sleeping and working. Oh, I'm so tired. Is that against regulations? I didn't know we were permitted to be tired. Oh, Eva, I almost forgot. I bought it on the way to work this morning. Do you like it? Oh, Anna, you're so impractical. How long did you have to save for that, huh? It doesn't matter. You're just going to be 12. And when a boy reaches that age, he should have a fountain pen. And you should have a new dress, and I should have a pair of shoes, and my husband should have fountain pens. Oh, Anna, I'm sorry. It's a beautiful pen. Yes, oh, it is. Sometimes I just can't help myself. When I think. Did you see that nice material they were taking out of here today? Huh? Yes. Don't you ever wonder where it goes? Don't you ever wonder who gets dresses made from such materials? Huh? We work on it, oh yeah. But do we ever see anything like it in the stores? Look at it, lunch. I tell you, Anna, those Russians are taking everything. All right, all right. It's our lunch time. We're entitled to eat, aren't we? Eva, how can you talk to them like that? I'm sick of them. Eva, don't go. <laughs> Eva. When's your son's birthday? <laughs> Tuesday, tomorrow. Oh, good. So soon, huh? Yes, He'll October 23rd. For Anna Peretzel, a birthday, a present for her son. But for Miklos Lukas, age 19, student at Budapest University, the unrest and discontent of Hungary was real and vital. Still doing your homework? No, grandfather. Yeah. Russian. Why do they expect you to learn to speak Russian? It's required. You're Hungarian, a Magyar, not a Slav. It will change, grandfather. Sure. A boy goes to the university, they pay for it, they teach him what they want to teach him. He joins a young communist group and suddenly he's no longer Hungarian. You didn't understand, Grandfather. Sure, of course not. I am old. You are, what do they call you? A new youth. I don't like the idea of studying Russian either. But it is possible to be a good Hungarian and a communist. And a good Catholic too. Grandfather, why always do you say that? Uh, I suppose you think we have a wonderful country with a secret police everywhere. Our great premier picked for us by, some, by somebody in Russia. It will change. Sure. I'm not so young anymore. I think I'll live long enough. Yes, you will. All of us, all over, in all the universities, we have been talking, holding meetings. Meetings, Miklos? What about the secret police? They don't bother us. Not now. Not after what happened in Poland. Grandfather, it will change. We're going to try to have a demonstration, if we can get enough people together. Maybe 10,000, 15,000. Then the government will know there are some people in Hungary who do not intend to be quiet unless they listen to our demands. You said nothing of this. I was going to tell you tonight. Some of my friends were coming. We're going to make plans. I was working on a list of demands. 
Then there is some hope for you, young one. It's only my friends. I still have bell fever. But we have to tell you! What is it? <laughs> it's been authorized. Actually. Yes, we just came from Paris. He heard from the Ministry of the Interior. The government's authorized us to have a, a peaceful demonstration ah. in Parliament Square. Did you hear that, Grandfather? The world is turning upside down. Then we haven't much time. We have to get leaflets printed. Oh, Zoltan here knows somebody who can get them printed overnight. Good leaflets. I've been trying to make them understand all the way here. What good are leaflets? They let the people know what we want. The more the, the more the people know, the more the government will understand what we want. There's a better way to tell them. How? With guns. <laughs> Andre, we don't have guns. And if we had them, we wouldn't use them. This is going to be a peaceful demonstration. Look, if we get these things, if they get rid of El Guerra, if they put in Imran Naj, if they throw out the secret police, don't you see we will get what we want? Maybe what you want. But to throw out Soviet communism just to have Hungarian communism, that's no reason for me. Then what is the reason for you, Andre? I want to be free to decide what I want. You have got to learn to crawl before you can walk. Crawl. Yes, that's a good word, crawl. Do you think they'll even let you crawl? If we present the demand, oh, please, please. Andre, please. If we don't get started right now, we won't have time to get the leaflets done. Why? How soon is it then? It's demonstration the Wednesday? demonstration's tomorrow. It's Tuesday, October 23rd. Tuesday, October 23rd. Throughout the city of Budapest, that date was mentioned again and again as gatherings were held. Gatherings to make plans for the largest peaceful demonstrations since the Soviets had seized control of Hungary. By October 23rd, news of the planned demonstration had spread throughout the city. News that brought varied reactions. For Captain Gobi and Maria Sabo, it was a moment of disappointment. Well, why did you have to wait until the last minute? Because Jeffy? I didn't know until the last minute, darling. The orders only just came in this morning. The entire company's alerted. We have to be on duty. Well, I should have expected something like this. Don't you think I'd rather go to the ballet with you than stand guard at an arsenal? But what does the army expect to happen? Do they expect the whole country to blow up just because some students get together to make a lot of noise? Would you like to talk to my colonel about it? Darling, I am a soldier. I have my orders. I obey them. Well, if the government expected trouble, then they should never have permitted them to have the demonstration in the first place. That's all I can say. I suppose they figure it's better if people let off steam this way than have some other kind of trouble. A bunch of kids. Oh? They expect possibly as many as 20,000 people. 20,000? Sandor, why? Have you read any of their leaflets? No, of course not. Well, you should read them. There are some things a person could agree with. Oh, so you think it's all right for us to miss the ballet? Oh, darling, I didn't say that. I wish they'd have the demonstration next week or last week or any other time, but it is today and I am on duty and there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, Shondo. It's all right, darling. We'll go to the ballet next week, I promise. To Anna Peretzel and her husband, Janos, their son's birthday party was the one important event of the day. Oh! <laughs> that means good luck. Good luck for the coming year. He has it already with a mother like you. Oh. Now go on, go on. Open your present. I am so nervous. Twelve years old and nervous? <laughs> but you're a man already, isn't he, Anna? He's my baby. Oh, don't you like it? It's wonderful. Oh, Mama. <laughs> Papa. Wait, wait. <laughs> Grown men don't kiss streetcar conductors. Wait, I want to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a wonderful day, Anna. Yes. You know, I was afraid I wouldn't get here on time. There was such a mob of people in the street. Oh. Today on the streetcar, that's all they were talking about, this demonstration. You heard about it? How could I help but hear? It's a good thing, Anna. You know, if it weren't for Josef's birthday, I might have gone myself. Janusz, no. Stay out of these things. I don't know if it's possible for us to stay out of these things. Not really, Anna. But, Janusz, no, you should... so much here. Wait until they show them at school. Aren't you going to show us how it lies? Yes, where's my notebook? Oh, wait. First a speech. When a man gets his first birthday present, he must make a speech. Oh, no. no, that's right. Isn't it, Janusz? Hmm? Oh, please, forget about the demonstration. I don't know if we can separate ourselves from what goes on around us. Janusz, I, please. I know you don't want me to become involved, but how Janusz, can I just... it's Josef's birthday. Is anything more important than a son's birthday? All right. <laughs> All right, Susan. Let's hear the speech, Josef. Huh? Speech. 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 We demand the dismissal of Soviet-sponsored Premier Erna Gera. We demand his replacement by Imran Arj. We demand the replacement of Soviet shields by Hungary's national emblem. 
with the man's removal of Soviet troops from our country. Oh, you can see, can't you, Andrew? With these old Budapest, we'll know what we want. All right, all right. And maybe, maybe we can even let all Hungary, all Europe, know what we want. Oh, how? Do you intend to drop leaflets from airplanes? Radio. Radio? I was talking to some others today. If enough people come to the demonstration, we're going to march to Radio Budapest, send in a delegation, and insist they broadcast our demands. And you think to let them, you do it, hmm? We can try, Andrew. We can try. Come on, it's time. You know, maybe we'll even have more than 20,000 people. More than 20,000. Miklos Lukas was right. They poured into Parliament Square. Students, writers, journalists, engineers, artists, all considered by the Soviets to be the backbone of the communist regime in Hungary. By the time the decision was made to march to Radio Budapest, the crowd had reached a height of almost 200,000. 200,000 Hungarians peacefully demanded an end to Soviet suppression. Enough? Yes, Mama, I think so. Be sure now. One cake a year. That's all we can afford. It'll be a lot. What is it, Janusz? Well, don't you hear it? Anna! Josef! Look at the wall! It's the students. They're marching. The students. I never saw so many people at one time. But where are they going, Janusz? Where? The students marched toward Radio Budapest, the government radio station, heavily guarded by the AVO, the hated secret police. A delegation armed only with a list of demands to be broadcast was permitted to enter the station. And as the moments passed, the tension mounted. Where's the delegation? Why don't they come out, Andre? What do you think? They've been arrested. But they promised to let them talk. You still believe in their promises? We'll wait. The crowd waited with no sign of the student delegation. The secret police ordered the students to disperse, and the fuse that was to ignite a nation was about to be lit. The minutes went by, and still no word of the missing delegates. The temper of the crowd grew shorter and shorter, but still they waited. And then, when almost two hours had passed... Where is our delegation? Why don't they come out? You were told to disband. Go back to your homes. Where are they? What have you done with them? We demand an answer! Go back to your homes! Go back! No! Come on. This is your last warning. Stay back! Mother of God! Where are you going? I want to see what's happening! Joseph, listen to your mother. Stay where you are. Joseph, it doesn't affect you. Do you understand? Whatever is happening out there, it can't possibly affect you. Isn't that right, Janos? Janos! Isn't that right? How are you greeted when you get home at night? Like this? Or like this? It's all because her feet hurt. And good reason. The average housewife walks nine miles every day. No wonder she's tired when you get home. An age-old problem. But now, there's an answer. And here it is. A new development in Armstrong Floors. A built-in cushion of springy foam called Cushion Ease, a floor that actually floats on tiny bubbles of air. Here, under the surface, is the layer of foam that cushions every step you take. Here's what happens when your shoe strikes the floor. See how this foamy cushion gives underfoot? It absorbs every shock. You feel like you're walking on air because you really are. And that's why you feel so much less tired even after a long day on your feet. You can have the new Cushionies backing in two of Armstrong's most luxurious floors. <laughs> Plastic Corlon in the new mosaic style with its smart handcrafted mosaic chips available in a wide range of decorator colors or Beautiful spatter linoleum, one of Armstrong's most popular floor styles. Next time you build or remodel, remember Cushionese, 
the newest luxury for your home in spatter linoleum and plastic corallon by Armstrong, the modern fashion in floors. The shots fired by the secret police at Radio Budapest were the beginning. A wave of anger swept through the city. Anger that sent the students surging through the streets of Budapest all that night and into the next morning. Some to try to get arms, some to tear down reminders of Soviet oppression, a night-long protest against oppression. By the morning of Wednesday, October 24, the spokesman at the government-controlled radio station tried to distort the situation, tried to excuse the brutal fact that Premier Erno Geiru had called in 10,000 Soviet troops equipped with 80 tanks, artillery and armored cars, an army against the students of Budapest. And the shameless gangs have stormed plants and public buildings, murdered civilian soldiers and security police. The government was not prepared against bloody attacks from ambush. The government, therefore, has called Soviet troops stationed in Hungary under the Warsaw Pact for help. The Soviet units responded to the government's request and are engaged in restoring order. All looters will be punished by the severest penalties. We request the peaceful citizens of the Budapest not to fear any further spreading of violence. Your government has a complete control. The Captain armed Bobby. attacks of the counter-revolutionary gangs, Sergeant. aided by their fascist leaders, have been definitely halted. Hello, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, when? Yes, sir. We'll be expecting him. Sergeant. Yes, sir. The Russian staff sending over an officer to inspect all arsenals. They expect him here in about an hour. You think it's because of the students, sir? They don't tell me everything, Sergeant. But probably. Go inside to alert the men. Tell them to make sure everything's in order. Yes, sir. And, Sergeant, tell the men not to worry about it. I know the inspecting officer, Colonel Kalinov, is a friend of mine. 8.30 a.m. for Captain Shandor Gobi, the imminence of a special inspection. For Anna Peretzel, the start of a normal day. Anna, where are you going? To the factory, I believe. No, no, not today. There must still be some fighting some places in the city. It's just the students, Janusz. I can't miss a day at work. You know what it means. How many days of pay they will take from me. Maybe I should stay home from school, Papa. Hmm. You're too eager. No, no, you stay here. You too, Anna. Janusz, we can't afford it. You heard the radio. Everything's calming down. By this afternoon, it will all be forgotten, but if I am not at work... All right, at least let me go with you. Then you will be late no, for no, work. No, 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 that doesn't matter. Just wait here, I'll get my coat. <sighs> Janusz, please. Yes, Papa, I couldn't wait for him. But tell him. Oh, Mama, he said to wait for him. Where's your mom? She said to tell you that she... Anna! You stay here. I'm going out after your mother. You wait until I get back. Anna! Anna! We're not like that. All night. Where Please, were you? Get into that away. Well, I was so worried. Andre, your head. No, no, it's not serious. Not serious? Is Miklos all right? Yes, it is. Oh, I was so worried all night not to be home. All the shooting and the screaming and the tanks. It's all right. I would have looked for you, but I didn't know where to go. It's all right, Grandfather. Here, let's see. This doesn't look too bad. No, I said it wasn't serious. It's a piece of brick. You should have seen us, Grandfather. <laughs> At the Stalin Memorial yeah. statue. We pulled it down. Some police came and they joined us. Do you hear me, grandfather? They joined us. Uh, Russian troops or no Russian troops? Now they listen to us. Maybe you were lucky. You could have been killed. Oh, no. You still think we don't need guns, huh? We're to fight tanks with empty hands? There are other ways. Nobody's going to work today, nobody. But I don't understand you. In all these years, I've been here. want to work for them? After what happened last night? Because some students. Students! Hungarians. How oh, Anna, Hungarians asked for what is theirs by right. And they were shot. Tanks, machine guns. What are you going to do? We're going to march into the city, Anna. Into Parliament Square. We're going to show these Soviets that the workers are Hungarians too. We're going to show them something that they'll The momentum had started. Throughout the city, outraged workers met and drew up demands in lines with those of the students. And all over the city, the government forces tried to minimize the growing danger. Between you and me, Captain, I think the inspection is ridiculous. But you know what the army is like. Orders are orders. Sergeant. Uh, Colonel Kalinov, 
What is the latest news about the rioting? It will soon be over. The counter-revolutionary and the fascist leaders will be liquidated. By tonight, you won't even know what happened. Captain? What is it? A student, sir. Suppose they come here. Suppose they try to get into the arsenal. You're a Hungarian soldier, as I am, Sergeant. Your duty is to protect the arsenal. You will do your duty. Yes. In any event, no one will come. You heard the colonel. It was a riot, then it's over. Things are calming down already. Attention, attention, attention. In the interest of restoring peace, we announce that it is forbidden to hold any meetings, rallies, and parades. We request the citizens of Budapest to put their radio sets by the open windows. An important announcement follows. The Central Committee of the Hungarian Workers' Party has elected Comrade Imre Nagy as Prime Minister. Did you hear me? Comrade Erno Geru will continue as First Secretary. Geru, that's Soviet... Comrade Nagy announces that all those who lay down their arms by 2 o'clock will be freed from prosecution. He begs you to stand behind the party, stand behind the government. And now, we will continue with the musical portion. It will soon be over. We have Nagy. We made him listen to him. Nagy, do you want a, a communist government that brings in Soviet tanks to kill Hungarians? Geru did that. And we'll get rid of him. Uh, we don't need guns, Andrei. The government knows how we feel. All we need is to show the government that we want the rest of our demands. How? With another peaceful demonstration. Yes, Andrei. With another demonstration. Another demonstration. There was to be another demonstration, but this time, not only of students. The shots fired at the radio station, the calling in of Soviet troops, had brought the cumulative bitterness of 12 years of brutal suppression to the point of explosion. All Budapest was united as never before. Workers, businessmen, people from all parts of Budapest, all with but a single aim, to protest the calling in of Soviet forces, to insist on the removal of Erno Geru from any post in the government, to get by peaceable means the demands the students had formulated. The people of Budapest moved toward Parliament Square, toward a moment in history that was destined never to be forgotten. They walked into an open square that was ringed by tanks of the Soviet army, armed only with the flag of their country and their determination to be heard. And as the demonstrators gathered, the nervous tension grew for those who waited. Secret police and Soviet tanks had opened fire on the unarmed civilians. was right. You don't let butchers destroy your people. Oh, We're cleaning with this. No, no, no Not now. There isn't any time. The boys wanted to use guns. They sent us to school and taught us how to use guns too. Well, let's just show them how well they taught us. Come on. We'll get guns somewhere. But what can we do? What can we do? I, I look for a doctor. Joseph! Joseph! Joseph, no, no, stay where you are, Joseph! Joseph! And what right do you think you have to come in here and ask for guns? Sergeant! Captain, listen to me! 
There are hundreds more waiting outside. If you don't open the door willingly, then we'll back. You do nothing! You have no right here, any of you. This is government property. What government? The Hungarian government? Or is it the government that kills Hungarians? I want you to... Captain, we need guns and we're going to get them. Sergeant, get them out of here. Sergeant, would you not obey an order? Get out. And what are you waiting for, Captain? Don't you know what happened in Parliament Square? Slaughter! That's what happened, slaughter! Without warning, the Russian tanks and the secret police, they fired us. Captain, at least a thousand people. Hungarian men and women and children! Captain, I want you to take these men outside. Captain, are you going to shoot us? Are Hungarians going to shoot us too? I order you to shoot them down! Hungarian men and women. Sergeant, give me that. There's only one way to... All right, Sergeant, let them in. Give them Captain. weapons. Yes. Do you know how to handle a gun? Yes, Captain. And you? I can learn. I can learn. The fire had been started. A fire that was to burn more and more brightly. All over the city, outraged civilians took to the barricades. Hungarian troops in this moment of crisis decided their loyalty and went over to the rebels, entire regiments at a time. All thought of amnesty was forgotten. The crowd had turned into a mob, and the mob had become rebels, freedom fighters. There was no worker, no peasant, no student, no intellectual, no soldier. There were only Hungarians fighting for a free Hungary. There was valor, and there was tragedy. So you, I tried to save you, Zappi. I know, I know, Janusz. I know. Well, Janusz, I know you're here. Janusz! Janusz! Dear listeners, this is Radio Budapest. The party and the government are masters of the situation. Bloodshed has ended. The armed rebellion of irresponsible elements has been stopped. But it had not been stopped. It had just begun. can make an awful clatter on an ordinary floor. But what a difference when children play on this new Armstrong floor with its built-in cushion of springy foam. Cushion ease. You can actually hear the difference. Now, there's hardly any noise at all because this boy is truly walking on air. Cushion ease is the very newest development in Armstrong floors. This springy undersurface contains millions of tiny air bubbles to give you a floor that's not only quiet, but soft and comfortable, so you feel much less tired. New Cushion Ease comes in two of Armstrong's finest floors. First, plastic Corlon in the new mosaic style. The bright stone ship effect makes this floor a handsome background for any room. That's why it's being used in the very smartest homes. The other floor with cushion ease backing is one of our most popular Armstrong floors, spatter linoleum. So colorful and practical, and now it has the added luxury of extra comfort and quiet. At the flooring store, you will find Armstrong floors with cushion ease do cost a little more than some of the others, but certainly no more than you'd expect to pay for floors that are so luxurious or so practical. When you build or remodel, remember cushion ease the latest improvement in plastic corlon and spatter linoleum by Armstrong, the modern fashion in floors. October 24th, 4 p.m. The overwhelming Soviet might of more than 250 armored vehicles, more than 10,000 troops, more than 300 tanks had bored into Budapest to crush the unbelievable courage of Hungary's freedom fighters. By half past four, rebel forces had fought their way into a radio station and had added an invaluable ally, a voice, to the Hungarian people. 
Hungarians and patriots do not believe the deceptions of the communist broadcasts. We are winning our fight. Please do not lay down your arms until all Soviet troops have left the city. Our demands will be met if we show our solidarity. Everywhere Hungarians are rallying to the cause of freedom. Brave men and women are dying. But the spirit of our great heroes is not dead. We will fight from rooftops, from cellars, from street corners. We will fight without fear for the cause in which we believe, the cause of freedom for Hungary and for all Hungarians. Miklos. Yes. I'm afraid. We all are. Yes. But... What is it, Andre? Well, that's the secret police. You see him? Yeah. I got it. What happened? An APO. He's dead. Did you find your girl? No. Mary and her father must have gone someplace safer. I think we'd better do the same. I'll find her later. Well, what's the matter with this? You can't fight tanks with cafe tables. Look, what we need is a place tanks can't run over easily. A, a fairly narrow street, a house maybe, or second floor apartment with windows that look down over the street. My street? No, your building's no good. It's like that too far. <laughs> well, then, the, the building on the corner then. Some apartments have windows facing on two streets. Good, let's go there. Wait a minute. You two go ahead, we'll follow. Ender, help me with the ammunition. I'm afraid we'll need more than this before it's over. He's gone, Yusuf. Your papa is gone. Mama. The doctor said you should get some rest. Rest. Oh, I have to fix up. Mrs. Nemitz said she'd help. Mama, please go into the bedroom and try to sleep. Mrs. Nemitz said they across the hall. I'll get her to come in. Mama, please. All right. living on the second floor. No. Come on. Sonny, do you know who lives here? I do. Look, it's perfect. Is your father home? He is dead. They killed him. They will speak with your mother. You can't bother her. What is your name? Joseph. Joseph, we're trying to stop them. The same people that killed your father. But we can't fight tanks in the street. If we can use the windows of your apartment, we can you control. Understand. I'm terribly sorry about... I heard. Joseph, it does. Let them do what they want. Thank you. Mick Marsh, by the window. And they bring the ammunition. Yes. Can I help? Do you know what a Molotov cocktail is? Yes. Is there any gasoline here? There are some cans in the basement. Elena. You and Joseph go down to the basement, bring up gasoline. Then find empty bottles, all you can get, any kind, big or small, and bring them here. Joseph! There was no age limit in Hungary's fight for freedom. A fight that used every weapon that could be found. A pair of scissors to cut the hated red star from Hungary's flag. Empty bottles and gasoline for anti-tank warfare. Human courage and determination. Courage that grew as the days passed, October 25th, 26th, 27th, and the revolution spread jumping to Dwa and Chopran on the Austrian frontier, to Sigad near Yugoslavia's border, to Miskolc in the north. A desperate government promised concessions. Your demands are being fulfilled. You've been promised the withdrawal of Soviet troops. Why do you go on fighting? Why must we have more bloodshed? Patriots, freedom fighters, we beg you not to lay down your arms until every Russian soldier is out of Budapest. And, and do not be fooled by promises, but insist upon actions. 
October 28th. The Russians were still in Budapest, and the fighting continued. Now, when I tell you, you run down by the front door. We'll draw their fire up here. Then you run up to the tank and throw the cocktail. Do you think you can do it? Yes. All right, then. Right now, Joseph. Remember, wait till they fire up this way. Now. I'm the turret, they'll be coming out soon. Here they come! I can learn. I can learn. Three words, words that were heard again and again throughout Hungary. A boy can learn to kill. Women can learn to stand in line for food while death lies at their feet. People can learn to look at death. All this can be learned so long as there is hope and faith. October 30th. Only one week since the first shots were fired, and the passing of each day increased the problems of the revolutionaries. How much longer will this last? Uh, maybe we can get some more. If only Nick was. Shouldn't he be here by now? Soon. I've been a soldier since I was 20 years old. I've never known anything like this. Where well, there is a war and no war. Well, we're fighting here, but we don't know what someone else is doing 500 yards away. Well, maybe Miklos will bring some news when he comes. Mm. Maybe even some ammunition. What is on the table? It smells good. It was the best I could get. The line was forever. <sighs> Captain, how much longer can we go on? It's been a week now, and we're still alive. Of us. Oh, Mrs. Petzel, if we can just endure until the Americans come. Oh, Captain! What is it, Joseph? Listen! What? All the church bells in Budapest must be ringing. Turn on the radio, Joseph. A living symbol of the great spirit of free Hungary. Throughout the world, they will be rejoicing at the liberation of Joseph Cardinal Vincent. Oh, Cardinal Vincent, Vincent you Cardinal. Somebody, have you heard? We're listening now about the Cardinal. No, it's more than that. The Russian troops are pulling out of Budapest. Are you sure? won! And today, a great victory has been won. Marshal Zhukov has given the order for the withdrawal of all Soviet forces. So now, we ask the population, every honest citizen, to keep discipline and to help in the smooth withdrawal of these troops. It was an almost unbelievable victory. The magnificent courage of the freedom fighters had forced back the overwhelming power of the Soviet army. October 31st, one by one, the massive Soviet tanks evacuated the shattered city. And as they left, the symbols of their oppression were torn from a nation that could feel the breath of freedom after 12 long years of dictatorship. It seemed to be the beginning and uh, the end of an era and the beginning of a new life for a free people. A people now concerned with the aftermath of seven days of bloodshed. A people who found the joy of liberty tempered by the reality of death. We shall build up an independent and free Hungary. We shall create a freedom of conscience, a life without fear, a life without slavery. 
We shall create a life that recognizes only one command. Never to forget why Hungary has reached out for arms. Savage reprisals against the hated secret police soon ended, and a quieter atmosphere gradually descended upon Budapest. A quieter atmosphere, but one that could scarcely be called normal, as throughout the city, the revolutionaries tried to piece their lives together. For Sándor Gobi, captain in the Hungarian army, there was the end of a search. Mr. Sabo. Captain. Sándor. Oh, I've looked for you so many places. I couldn't come back here until today. It's, it's so good to see you, Sándor. Is Maria inside? Oh, Sándor. Yes? Maria's dead. Maria. Mr. Zabo. Chandra, I know your barracks have been destroyed. Do you have a place to stay? There's a student. I'm staying with him at his grandfather. A student, Mr. Sapper, only a boy. All this, the end of Soviet oppression. It was done with children. Children? Shandor, do you really think it is the end? Of course it is the end. The Russians are out of Budapest. Soon they'll be out of Hungary. And what about the rumors? You must have heard them. They said the Russians are bringing troops from Czechoslovakia, from Romania. From the Soviet Union itself. Ah, uh, they say, they say, they say. Always you'll find somebody to look for sorrow. I heard the rumors too. But the Russians say they are regrouping their forces. There's nothing to fear in that. We fought and we won. And you don't think we need these anymore? I don't know what will be tomorrow. But I know what is here today. Miklos, I walk through the streets of the city. I see buildings torn, streetcars overturned, electric wires hanging everywhere. But I see something else, too. I see a spirit, a joy, an accomplishment. That is what is here today. An independence, a freedom. Something this wonderful, Miklos. You don't lose. And the Russians? They say they'll be out of Hungary in three weeks. I wonder. Uh, we waited 12 years. We can wait three weeks. November 3rd, 1956. Five days of freedom. For Anna Pelletzel and her son Josef, a readjustment, not only to a new life, but to a new maturity. Oh, Josef, why must you make so much noise? I'm sorry, Mama. I've told you day after day, year after year. You never listen to me. More bottles. Are you trying to collect all the bottles in Budapest? The captain wants us to be ready. Ready for what? Joseph, it's over. Tomorrow is Sunday. We will go to church and thank God that it's over. The captain said if the Russians come back, we should be ready for them. We're supposed to come back here and be ready to fight. Mi Ilona, Mikolaj, the captain, and me. You? Seven days ago, you were 12 years old. And now you are what? 100. My baby. My baby. Mama, please. All right. One does not cry in front of such a man. Oh, I almost forgot. Look what I got for you. Today is our fifth day of freedom, but we must please, we must remain on our guard. AVO snipers are still at large, and even our Russian forces are still surrounding our city. They say they are ready to negotiate a withdrawal, and the delegation from our free government has gone to their camp to make final arrangements. Free citizens of Hungary, please pray for their success. Pray that tonight we'll see the end of the Russian army on our sacred soil. 
During these anxious moments, for some, sleep was impossible. For others, the new life now seemed to be assured. And then, at 5.15 Sunday morning, November 4th, 1956... Freedom fighters. Freedom fighters, attention. The Russian gangsters have betrayed us. They've taken our delegates prisoner, and even now they have started an attack against our capital. Tanks and armored vehicles are moving into Budapest. All freedom fighters are urged to defend your city. There is no time, so please hurry. Radio Free Europe, attention, relay our news. We appeal to you for help. The Russian gangsters have betrayed us. I speak in the name of Imre Naj. He asks for help. The whole people asks for help. Now be sure to tell Leonor to bring all the ammunition she can. Yes. And no chances. Is that clear? You come right back here. Yes. Here's Yourself, you're gone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But well, they go into the whole room. Oh, Mrs. Pear said it would be safer. Safe? Is any place safe? You send a boy out into the streets with a gun, and I should be safe. Joseph? Mrs. Pepp, sir. Joseph! Let me go! Joseph! 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 You can't help him now, he's dead. The sniper. You killed him. Uh, you did it. You and you. My husband and my son. Why couldn't you leave us alone? Mrs. Perth, I'm Sarah. going to tell you are sorry. Is it going to bring my son back to me? My husband? Is it worth it? All oh, this killing? Is it worth it? Yes, it is. It is. Mrs. Petzal, I'm sorry your son was killed. I'm sorry your husband was killed. I'm sorry Maria and Ender and thousands of people were killed, but if you ask me if it's worth it, I say yes. If we can only make the rest of the world see it as it is, if we can only show the rest of the world what it's like under the Soviets, yes, it's worth it. This is the beginning of the end for them, Mrs. Petzal. being massacred, but we are not afraid. Send the news to the world. We are not afraid, but we need help. We need help. We need help. November 4th. That morning, 5,600 Russian tanks and 200,000 Russian troops crashed back through Hungary. After November 4th, the world witnessed in horror the most brutal and ruthless destruction, as the Russians set about systematically to destroy every vestige of the revolution. Thousands of patriots were slaughtered, thousands more deported to slave labor in the Soviet Union. The citizens of Budapest met the Russian treachery with quiet heroism. Now one of the rebels is with us tonight, a Hungarian motion picture star, leading actress of the Budapest National Theater, 
a woman who made her home a fortress from which freedom fighters could battle the oncoming tanks. When warned that she and her husband were on the point of being arrested for their revolutionary activities, there was no choice but to leave Hungary. And on November 20th, she and her family barely escaped across the border into Austria and freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, I should like you to meet the actress who played the part of Anna Perezel in tonight's performance. Her real name, Miss Eva Sorenyi. Thank you, Mr. Swayze. My name is not important. I am a Hungarian, and it is as a Hungarian I speak to you. It is important for the world to understand that we are a united people. We are as one in this struggle. One person, all of Hungary. One person that will not give up its fight. The Russian tanks, the Russian soldiers have destroyed our homes, have killed many of us. But they can never succeed in crushing the spirit of our people. And as long as that spirit is alive, we will not lose our fight. Thank you and good night. One week from tonight, the Kaiser Aluminum Hour will bring you Fielder Cook's production of Throw Me a Rope, starring French Tone. The haunting story of a man, his work, his marriage, and the fear that threatens all three. Don't miss Throw Me a Rope on the Kaiser Aluminum Hour, one week from tonight. Hey, extra paper, extra! It's here, the revolutionary new foil from Kaiser Aluminum. Kaiser Broiler Foil, the only foil in the world that's quilted to give it super strength. Look, it's so strong that a single layer can support Kaiser's Katie. There it is. Nothing more than a single sheet of Kaiser broiler foil holding her up. Here, you can see for yourself. Just a sheet of foil right out of the box. The secret is this exclusive diamond pattern quilted into the foil. It gives Kaiser broiler foil amazing strength. Strength to handle the heaviest kitchen jobs easily. Wrap with it. It refuses to split. Cook with it. It's extra large to fit your broiler pan. Kaiser Broiler Foil. It's quilted to give it super strength. Try household, all-purpose, and super strong Kaiser Broiler Foil in the red quilted box. Strong Circle Theater has been selected for viewing by the Armed Forces Overseas. Two weeks from tonight, the Armstrong Circle Theater will bring you the true story of a Chicago attorney who devoted many years to proving the innocence of a man who had been imprisoned for 16 years for a crime he swore he had never committed. Be sure to see Biff McGuire starring in Error and Judgment, the case of prisoner number 16688 on the Armstrong Circle Theatre.